leading controversy as to whether she must wait for theatres and multiplexes to open, or Pamit Surya, the producer of Ponmogal Vandal, to be released on the direct to OTT platform, action shows that they were not willing to wait. Time will tell whether uh, the flexing of muscle of multiplex will work on Surya and Jyotika or whether they will see sanity in the process and the situations that are. On hand today, releasing this morning on the direct to OTT platform is the Jyotika Starer, Onmagal Pandal, directed by J.J. Frederick. The film is a very linear story. Starts off with blurred pictures in the backdrop of a scenic Uti, where you see a lady shoot somebody and a car drive past, a yellow car, because it's significantly referred to in later parts of the film. The story goes that children, girls, go missing in Uti, and the needle of suspicion is this lady called Jyoti. She's seen as a psycho killer who's killing girls and a serial killer. The entire community is against her except for one person in the village who's petitioned Peturaj, who's played by Bhagiraj. Fast forward 15 years. Into the same area comes Bemba, played by Jyotika, a lady lawyer who is out there to open the Pandora's box and open up the case at the behest of a direction by the High Court. Pratap Putin steps in as the judge. We have Parthi Ban coming in as the public prosecutor and the narrative moves to the court. So in short, in the backdrop is the story of a serial killer about sexual perversion of children being killed, rape. In the forefront you have a political drama happening or a court scene drama happening. And between the two is the whole story of Purnmagal Vandal. The girl child has arrived. The girl child in the Indian polity has never been great news. Time and again, we've talked about female fetocide. We've talked about how we have a history in this country of children suffering abuse not so often from outside as by members within the family too. This is made into a cinema. A good friend of mine once questioned very seriously whether we are somewhere celebrating this whole cause of rape by dramatizing it, by talking about it, by making real the gory incidents of rape. That's a huge debate as to whether rape in all its gory form should be talked off in open. After all, we've had some great films in South Katara who comes to my mind, Kabil comes to my mind, films where rape has been central to the story. Here again, it's not so much rape as it is child abuse and killing, but nonetheless, it's something as gory, something as sensitive, something that is undigestible that becomes the core of Purnmagal Bandar. How they deal with it, what happens with the courtroom drama, what happens when Partiban, a senior counsel from the city, comes to this town to argue this matter? Is he out there to save the businessman played by Tyagarajan in the character of uh, Vardarajan, who runs a home for children? is what the story is about. Uh, I won't go too much into the story part of it. I think the film is very loud to begin with. It's very linear. The problem with the film is that the filmmaker is not very sure where he wants to take the movie. 
If he wants to deal with it as a courtroom drama, then the entire courtroom drama falls flat. Because there is on the one hand, Partiban as the public prosecutor, overboard, rude, very unlike a character who would come as a designated senior coming and arguing a case in a town. Very personal are the attacks. Uh, I think it's more a slang match than a court case. And remember, nowadays, audience are wise. They've got used to films like Mulk. So I don't think you can take too many liberties, even dramatic, in a court scene drama. If your story is about a woman suffering and the build-up about how a woman scorned is not the best to deal with societally, then I think you fail there because Jyotika is most often than not seen as somebody on the verge of a collapse and who's fighting a battle not out of her strength but from her weaknesses. Therefore, I think the filmmaker's clarity on what kind of a film he wants to end up with is suspect. And this, I think, is the major flaw with Pulmagal Panda. Even with the narrative, it's a two-hour plus movie and therefore crisp. The editor could have even cut it shorter. The editing is done by Ruben. I would have done away with the props. I don't know why our cinema needs to have needless characters like the tea shop guy, somebody in the way, another lady coming and talking to her, a victim coming and speaking to her, a scene dealing with an inspector who commits suicide, his wife coming into the picture. All these scenes would have made the film shorter, more effective and tighter. This doesn't happen. But the film is still worth a recommendation. It's worth a recommendation primarily because of the performance from Jyotika, but a word about that later. I'd also deal with two other aspects of the film. One is the music of the film. While Govind Vasanta's music is good, it definitely is an interruption into the narrative. From nowhere, suddenly, there's a background song. Just when things are catching up, just when people are about to bite their fingernails, a song comes in. So you know my fingernails are safe. This is a no-no with a thriller. Don't throw in songs. You're not making a musical out of a tragedy. You're not doing Mughal So I think it's bad business, bad grammar to get in needless music when the film is steadily progressing towards a nail-bite finish. The other aspect of the movie, I would believe, is the cinematography. Now, there are amazing scenes capturing an absolutely picturesque booty. But they're superimposed into the story because they don't gel really with the tale. You suddenly have Jyotika staying somewhere in the hills to sing the song, or just she's standing to cry, or there's a rain shot, just to show the scenic beauty of Uti. You are not selling Uti. You are marketing the tale of a lady in anguish. Therefore, while Ramji's cinematography is very good, I think it is superimposed into the film. And that is where it doesn't chill and become a masterpiece in the larger product. Now back to what is central to the film, or who is central to the film, Jyotika. Now, again, Jyotika turns out with a schizophrenic performance. There are scenes where she's amazingly underplayed herself. As the lawyer, she is top of the rack. I don't think you see from South India too many actresses take on this kind of thing. Jyotika has made a habit out of it. I, should, I would say that she's done some amazing performances. Mori comes to mind, but many others. Uh, however, there are some over-the-top scenes, the crying, the wailing, the shouting. I think this, this uh, kind of scenes is best skewed by filmmakers because they, 
they tend to believe that the audience likes it or that the viewer wants something over the top and they want it to be over dramatic and theatric. I think this could have been avoided because Jyotika's pop pack performance in underplaying herself as the lawyer or as the person who is a victim of sorts is amazing. She carries the gamut of the role amazingly, except that when she has to overdo her job. In the ultimate analysis, on a scale of 1 to 10, I will give Unmugal Vandal just about go and watch it film 6 on 10. And out of the 6 on 10, 3.5 to 4 will be simply because of Jyotika, a half or plus for a few minor twists and turns that keep the tale engrossing. But notwithstanding all this, Purnmagal Mandar is worth a two-hour investment, worth going and seeing, in fact, worth staying back and seeing. Bye-bye.